So hello everybody. I wanted to share with you my experience of alcohol withdrawal, hallucinations, and DTs. So it was basically just a normal day. I got up, I went for a walk, I came home, I did a workout at home, and then uh, took a shower and I just, I really wasn't feeling that great. And um, sat down and my husband's like, what do you want for breakfast? And I said, I don't think I'll be able to eat anything. And I got up and I ended up puking uh, twice. And then I got this pain, really bad pain. It was all about right in here. And um, it was bad. And I knew I just had this feeling it's not good. It's not good. You need to call uh, the ambulance. So my husband called the ambulance. They showed up and um, talked me through some things. They didn't really know, um, you know, what it could be. I thought it was, you know, maybe uh, indigestion or just, I didn't know. You know, so anyway, they ended up taking me to the hospital. I got to the hospital, and the pain just multiplied. I mean, just unreal pain. It was so, like, the worst pain I've ever, ever experienced in my life. And they kept me in the emergency room longer than I wanted, obviously, uh, with me screaming in pain. And they ended up taking me to do a CAT scan. And when I came back from the CAT scan, it wasn't long. The doctor came in. He said, you have acute uh, chronic pancreatitis and this is all from alcohol and they shot me up with some you know painkiller they said it was 10 times stronger than morphine um, and it barely touched it it was like barely touched the pain and I knew at that point okay I'm going down a road here um, so the painkiller started kicking in a little bit and started getting a little foggy and I remember they wheeled me off into a room and in this room, they're kind of monitoring me, watching me. My husband was still with me at this point. And I felt fine. I mean, I still had the pain, but I didn't, they're kind of warning me saying, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna end up going through alcohol withdrawal. And I'm thinking, really? I mean, I know I'm a, a drink, um, pretty social drinker, um, but I really honestly had absolutely no clue that I would absolutely <laughs> go through a withdrawal. And I'm going, yeah, whatever, yeah, right, you know, this is just, let's just take care of the pancreas and go from there. So um, they had me all hooked up, and they padded the bed down, and I'm looking around going, oh my God, what are you padding the bed for? What's going on here? And I think when it started really happening for me is I'd got, gotten up and was assisted to the bathroom, and my urine was like dark, I mean, almost blood dark. And I came into the room and I saw something. And this is when the hallucinations started, uh, waking hallucinations started kicking in. And that's when the nurse apparently had said something like, I go, here we go. You know, we need to get her ready because uh, she's gonna either stroke or have a seizure. And really kind of at that moment, things got really blurry for me because um, they ended up putting me under pretty good uh, to control to make because my heart rate was sky high blood pressure was sky high and they were really worried that you know like I said I was getting either stroke or you know have a seizure so at that point um, you know as far as my memory now it kind of comes down to my husband uh, telling me what had happened at that point apparently I went into um, cardiac care where they were kind of you know keeping track of my heart because that was going pretty pretty heavy but I wasn't in there for long when um, they ended up putting me into ICU and now, what I can tell you that I remember, and this is, of course, hallucination memories, it's not waking memories at all. And, um, you know, so I had, first of all, I had no clue even that I was in ICU. Um, so here I am in this state, this deep state, and I really felt like it was real. I mean, it was that real to me. It was, I was carrying on, I was not in the hospital. And the first thing I remember about my hallucination, very first, first hallucination that I remember was I was in a parking garage and there was two doctors and they kind of were come together with me in a wheelchair. And the doctor said to me, he said, there's nothing more we can do for you. And he just walked away from me and the other one walked the other way. And I remember standing there in this empty garage and I just looked around and I looked at, just looked around and it, honestly, it was the most surreal, peaceful experience ever. And I felt, this is it, you know, I'm, I'm gonna die. I'm, I'm, I'm done here, I'm, I'm done, I'm going, I'm gone. 
there was no nothing. I mean, it was me and me alone having this experience with peace. And it didn't last long. And then all of a sudden it was like down this rabbit hole. I mean, literally like phew, down this hole of deep, dark hallucinations that were like, I was in ICU for eight days. And you know, I won't go into all the details of the hallucinations. Some of them are really too dark to even mention. Um, but unfortunately, I think from my past, you know, for me, I experienced more of the dark. I did have, I think, um, some good energy in there with my hallucinations with me. At one point, um, I remember this little pug puppy. Um, it was hugging my leg, and it just kept hugging my leg, and this little face was so cute. I remember taking pictures of it, and he always showed up in my hallucinations throughout my hallucinations. He would just kind of float, you know, around and just show up and show up for me. And, you know, I hallucinated that my dad had passed away. And now this is unreal. I mean, it's like so real that it just blows your mind. Because in that state, like I said, I had no clue. You know, so when all when I came through after eight days and I got put into a room, you know, I still was going through some major hallucinations, but now they were waking hallucinations. You know, so I still did not know I was in ICU. I still had no clue. Now I'm awake, um, but yet it's all surreal. I mean, it's like, what the hell are you doing to me? You know, who are these people? I felt like I'd been kidnapped. You know, so I had I was sitting there on the bed and I had my phone and I was underneath the covers and. I'm calling the cops because I'm being kidnapped and I'm angry, you know, and the cops are coming. And I remember the nurses coming in and they're like, who are you talking to? What kind of, what's, what do you have? And it's like, oh, you have a magical phone. And I'm like, oh yeah, you guys, this is bad. You know, you're bad. You're doing bad things to me and you're going to get caught for this. And I'm not kidding. It was just, um, it was crazy, crazy. Well, as the days progressed, I was in the hospital for a total of uh, three weeks. And, um, you know, things progressively got better. They started weaning me off of the meds, and so things started to get a little better, and I was clear. But I couldn't talk. I couldn't write. I couldn't walk. Um, I couldn't express, you know, so trying to talk, you know, to my husband. And, you know, he'd walked up to me, and there was a point in my hallucinations where I sure he'd left me, you know, for another woman, you know. So he shows up, and I'm like, what are you even doing here? And I was pissed at him. He's like, what are you talking about, you know? And it's just really sad. Um, horrible hallucinations where they had to say, Shelly, this is not real, you know, this is all hallucination. So my husband took pictures of me in I ICU, and I'm really glad he did, because if I didn't have those photos, I wouldn't have any knowledge that I was even in that state where all that had happened to me. And here I'm thinking, I cannot believe all of this came down to alcohol. I mean, it all came down to alcohol. I mean, I was this close to being done leaving this earth. I'm 55 years old. I'm just not, you know, I just, for something that's so socially acceptable, so readily on the shelves, so easy to get, you know, to be, to party, to have a good time, you know, it's, you know, I'm a video producer. I mean, this is my life, you know, radio, TV, you know, I mean, party, have a good time. So yeah, you know, I did drink heavily, um, drank every day, probably for good 25 years, if not more, and uh, started out with wine. That got toxic for me. Then I changed over to vodka, Long Island iced teas. And I always, you know, justified that I was a functioning alcoholic. I still could do my work. I could still come home. But, man, I put down those cocktails at night, you know, 7 to 10, if not more. You know, at night, I always woke up feeling like shit, which, you know, of course. But, you know, I always got up. I functioned. I got to the gym. I worked out. Um, I did my work. I was good. I just had absolutely no awareness that alcohol is that toxic to the body, to the brain. I mean, to the brain. It's like amazing what the brain does and how it creates all these images and the reality of that. And none of it was real except for the fact that I almost died from a social substance that's socially acceptable and readily on the shelves. You know, I just want to share this experience. I want to make it kind of quick. I didn't want to be like going on forever with it. So anyways, um, yeah, it was surreal. And I look at that picture all the time to remind myself that no, I'm never going to be in that position again. I haven't drank since, so I'm about two months, if not longer than that sober, which I'm thrilled. Um, I'm on a healthier, you know, with chronic pancreatitis is something I have to manage every single day. 
and I just can't go through that pain again. I can't put my husband and my family through that pain again. And um, it's something to think about what alcohol does to your brain, what it does to your body. And um, it's just, uh, anyway, something to think about. So if one person can take away something from this, that's great. You know, but we all live, live our lives. I would never have, you know, the symptoms have been there. That's the thing, you know. I mean, there were things going on with my body, but I just choose to ignore it. You know, I'm going to be dead before I go into the hospital type thing. I don't want to go into the hospital. Who does? You know, so it really kind of came down that for me. And that was a, an awakener for me. And, um, you know, so those days are over, you know. I had my fill. I had my fun. And, you know, and I'm still having fun. Alcohol doesn't create all the fun. You create the fun. You know, so take it however you want to take it. I just wanted to share. It was pretty intense. And, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.